Hey guys, I finally have some updates on the car. I, uh, I pulled everything out here this weekend. It was nice out. Decided to pull out the motor and clean up some things, make use of my time while I'm waiting for the wonderful tax return check to come back. So, I ordered, in the meantime, I ordered this idler pulley, which bolted or bolts right into the Corvette alternator bracket here. And that solves my issue of having little to no crank wrap. It was just before it was coming down here and going up here to the alternator. And it was also making contact with this bolt right here, the through bolt in the alternator. I had tried to grind it before to clearance it, but this, much better setup. And now I actually have some crank wrap. And you probably hear the bird flying around in the garage above me that's stuck. <laughs> Other things fixed. The exhaust manifold here, how I, it wasn't matching up. It was actually an issue with the gasket. In my rush to put it together, I probably wasn't paying attention. But it's now since fixed, and the manifold's on the way it should be. Here's a better, closer look of the coolant tubes I had set up. This was replacing the steam vent tube under the intake. So this is a better view of what was going on. And T's over here. Follows up here, goes in here, goes down and under, up over here, and this is where it goes out to my catch can. Couple other things. I made to make life easier in the future for myself. I just left a. Uh, I'll cut this down and put a, a coupler in here. But it's a pain to get to this in the fire up against the firewall. So I'll cut this down over here somewhere. Make it easy on myself. Uh, this under here. This I believe is the stock oil pressure sending unit. But it had broken uh, coming out of the truck originally, so. What it did was just take the hole shut. So now it's just a plug, so it's not puking oil everywhere. And I also had a giant intake leak right here, a vacuum leak. So plug was put in there. So that was part of the issue of my high idle. And then one of the one of you wonderful YouTube subscribers <laughs> mentioned to plug up my eye. Uh, uh, sensor here, the uh, idle control, intake idle control, and actually pry out the plunger and push it shut so it wasn't letting as much air through. That solved my really ridiculously high idle. It went from like 2200 down to 1100, something like that. So thank you. Didn't know I was going to be facing that issue. What else here? Transmission pulled this out to get it ready because as soon as the as soon as my uh, tax return comes back, <laughs> I'm going to be ordering a torque converter. I'm going to get a uh, it's 2800 to 3200 stall uh, anti ballooning plates converter off of Summit. I think it's like 360 bucks something like that. And then I also have to get the flex plate and bolt kit that has the spacer for the crank. That's 160 bucks. It's like an LS flex plate kit, I think is what it's called. And that's just to make like a turbo 350, 400 to an LS series engine. So, got this out. Got my shifter brackets on it here for when it's ready to go into the car. So once I get the torque converter and flex plate and bolt kit, I'll make the two up and drop it back in the car. Hook up my shifter and measure for a drive shaft. So that's motor and transmission stuff. And then while it was out here, I did some more cleaning up of things. I had the uh, the MSD and Mega Squirt wiring was just kind of thrown in here to make get it to run and work. So I went back over everything and really cleaned up these harnesses so that you don't see many wires. So now everything's cleaned up nice and 
wrapped and I did the, here's the mega squirt harness. Like this is throttle position sensor. And then these are the fuel rail left and banks one and two power and ECU feed. And this is a coolant temp sensor. This I need to hook up yet and wire in, but that's going to be intake air temp. And then, oh, here's a, a new, ran a new 10 gauge power wire and shrink tubed it. So that'll disappear against the black paint. So everything should look much better when it's back in and it should fit better. Did some clearancing with a big hammer <laughs> and bashed up the tunnel some more and focused around this area right here in reference to the heater pipes here you can kind of see there's a, a, a section that sticks out that was all so close to the cylinder head on this side so just push that in a little bit so after the uh, drive shafts measured for and then it'll go everything will go in and the test drive and everything then all that's left is ordering up some fuel injectors. I'm going to go with 80 pounds injectors. And it should be good to go at that point. Here's the fuel rails. Again, I took the time to wrap up all my wiring harness sections that I made and use these bullet connectors. They're actually really nice. So it just plugs in and goes. And it makes disassembly much easier too. I do need to do something with these fuel lines. I don't want this much rubber line. I think what I'm going to do is the fuel lines over here. Yeah, it's very dark. Let's see if we can see. The fuel lines are coming up right here, which you can't see, maybe. They're coming up here. What I think I'm going to do is extend them and poke them through this hole here and run hard lines or bend lines that come from the hole over here up and along under here and then connect to rubber out to the fuel line or fuel rails. I like to minimize the rubber as much as possible. I guess we can take a look at the now that the motor's out. These are the motor mounts that I made with the plate steel and black iron pipe welded it all up. So these work great. The other side's, well, obviously the same. But there's how the motor mounts are done. And, oh, I got my uh, EGR block off plate refitted back on here and tightened up now. So when it goes back together, it shouldn't sound like a lawn tractor anymore <laughs> with exhaust leaks and high idle. So that's where we're at now and hopefully within a couple weeks I get some money back, order some parts and throw it all back together and take another video. So I'll talk to you again then.